And I didn't know how to answer her, Heather. Of course, I would say, oh, no, no, eat that ice cream, honey. No, that's good. But like, well, then mommy, why won't you have any? Mm -hmm. Well, and I didn't have answers. Yeah. And that bothered me. Why? What are, what are the answers here? And it was the first crack for the first time in me realizing, oh my gosh, I don't think I have this figured out right. I think I have to rethink this. And I didn't know where to turn. I remember even saying to my sister once, I don't even know if I know what a healthy body image is. <laughs> Welcome to Compared to Who, the podcast to help you stop comparing and start living. I'm your host, Heather Creekmore. I hate to admit this, but I used to secretly obsess over my appearance. I thought it was part of my job as a woman to always look better, but never felt like I could be good enough. Maybe you can relate. But God, in His grace, He showed me a way out, and I want to give you all the tools you need to break free too. If you've ever spent too much time stressing over your looks, I get it. I hope you'll keep listening and find the same freedom I have. Here are three other things you need to know about me. I'm a minivan driving mom of four. I'm author of the book, Compared to Who, and a blogger at comparedtohu.me. And you just may have seen my epic bake fail on Netflix. If you've ever struggled with comparison or body image issues, Compared to Who is the show for you. I hope you enjoy today's episode and tell a friend about it. Well, hello and welcome to the Compared to You podcast. I'm Heather Creekmore and I'm glad you're listening today because we are continuing the Real Women, Real Hope series. And today I have a great real woman on the show with me today. She lives in St. Petersburg, Florida, and she takes every chance she gets to go to Disney World. Uh, she loves all kinds of things that are creative, words, books, old movies, writing, theater. She loves it all. She's married to her college sweetheart. They have one daughter and a super cute golden doodle puppy, and she loves to decorate. She's passionate about becoming the kind of wife and mother who lives in balance with food and acceptance of her body. And her name is Kristen Maddox, my friend Kristen, who is also a <laughs> contributor to Compared to Who, the blog. Thank you for being on the Compared to Who podcast today. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Heather. I'm very, very honored to be here. So what's super fun is I have a lot of contributors to blog from all over the country, but I have actually met you in person in That's Florida. Right. That's so right. We yes. got to hang out a couple yes. years ago and that was super fun. And yep. there's one thing that you all need to know about Kristen. She is a super encourager. We yeah. were going through a super hard time and Kristen was such an encouragement to me personally. So this woman knows how to encourage. Oh, and, I appreciate that. <laughs> and that's what we're going to kind of talk about today because our goal here at the Compared to Podcast is to encourage women who are struggling with body image. Mm -hmm. And Kristen, I know this has been your story and you've written about it on the blog. Yeah. Can you encourage us by just sharing the journey that you've been on over the last several years? Yeah, you know, it really has been one of the hardest and also mm. the most rewarding things that has ever happened in my life. My story is I'm just kind of your typical Christian girl. I was raised in a Christian home. I have always, I, I can't really remember a time that I didn't love the Lord and want to do what he's asked me to do in life. And, you know, when it came to body image stuff, I was a kid, I was raised in the 90s, you know, where our main source of entertainment was the TV. And so there was all this, you know, Oprah was always talking about dieting and Richard Simmons and Jane Fonda, you know, there's all this diet, diet, diet stuff. And so I really absorbed that as something that was true. I didn't even think about it twice. It was like, well, this is, so this is what, this is how you do this thing. Yeah. You diet, you are, you constantly are, are thinking about food when you're eating it, you're counting calories, you're, and this is just kind of what you do. And then you exercise a lot mm -hmm. and you kind of are exercising because you're allowing yourself to eat a piece of pie. Hmm. And so I need to exercise to get that piece of pie off. And it's always kind of this give and take. And I just, again, I, I just believed it. I didn't really even question it at all, that this is just the way it is. 
And I really approached body image that way as well, as this is how I can have peace with my body and what I look like if I just manage my dieting really well. And I kind of can stay at this level on the scale that I feel is acceptable. And if I can do that, I will have a healthy body image. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so, and I think there's a lot of people that maybe have approached it that way as well. It's, it's, it's what our culture says, right? Absolutely. So my real struggle began or where I really started to, to feel the pinch of this was after my daughter was born 12 years ago, I had a succession of three back surgeries Mm -hmm. and it was a very difficult time in my life because those surgeries were not successful. And I still, to this day, live with lots of pain. There are some days I can't even walk to the mailbox. I definitely can't walk long distances ever. I can't even at this point do physical therapy. I mean, my physical activity is extremely limited and it and it was after these three surgeries. So when my daughter was about three. So the way I managed it was I'm going to be able to eat this piece of pie or have this slice of birthday cake because I'm going to be going to the gym later and I'm going to be working that off. So that was the way I had managed it, right? Yeah. Well, all of that was taken away from me as far as being able to get out and work out or even really move much at all. Mm. So the decision that I made in my head was, okay, so I can't work out. I'm going to become an amazing dieter then. Mm. So I joined Weight Watchers. (laughs) I became their star dieter. I was the girl (laughs) that they were bringing up to the front of the meetings like, this young lady can't even work out. And look at, she's maintaining her weight, you know, and everybody would clap. And (laughs) that was just what I did and how I felt like I was managing having a quote unquote healthy body image, right? Because I was still staying on that number on the scale. And to me, that's what it was all about. And so the Lord kind of broke through in my life in this area when my daughter was about six or seven years old. And of course, I'm Miss Weight Watchers. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And um, of course, I'm telling her as she's growing, I'm saying with my words, oh, honey, the only thing that matters is who you are on the inside. And, you know, don't, you don't need to worry about what you look like. And of course I would look at my precious little girl and she was perfect and beautiful. And of course she's not counting calories and worrying about having a piece of cake, but yet my actions to her were hey, mommy has this little points calculator Mm -hmm. that I'm always calculating my point. And I'm always, you know, if there's a a piece of cake or a piece of pie, I will pass that up. Even if she, sometimes if she wanted me to have ice cream after school, Mm -hmm. we would drive through McDonald's. And I I mean this by preschool. She was very small at this point. We would drive through, I'd pick her up from school. We'd drive through, get some ice cream she would get some ice cream and I would order a Diet Coke, Mm -hmm. you know? So that was what my actions were telling her Yeah. rather than, you know, I wasn't really following my words. And so she started asking me questions Mm -hmm. and saying, mom, why aren't you going to have some ice cream? Mm -hmm. Why do I need to have ice cream? Is that going to make me fat? She just started saying these very concerning questions that I'm going, where is she getting this? I'm saying all the right things. I thought that I wasn't talking about my diet around her. Ha ha ha. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was living it around her Uh 24 seven. So whether I was talking about a diet or not, it didn't matter. She was absorbing it and picking up on it. And so the Lord so, isn't it so true that the Lord uses our children so many times mm-hmm. to speak to us in ways that nothing else can really get through. Yeah. And that is how he used this 
instant in my life. And it was really a succession of questions and wheat that she started really asking these things that were very unnerving to me. And I didn't know how to answer her, Heather. I sure. wasn't, of course, I would say, oh no, no, eat that ice cream, honey. No, that's good. <laughs> but like, well then mommy, why won't you have any? Mm-hmm. Well, and I didn't have answers. Yeah. And that bothered me. Why, what are, what are the answers here? And it was the first crack for the first time in me realizing, oh my gosh, I don't think I have this figured out right. I think I have to rethink this a little bit. And I didn't know where to turn. I remember even saying to my sister once, I don't even know if I know what a healthy body image is. Hmm. And it was, it was enough. The Lord shook me enough with it that I decided I needed some help And so he, oh, he's so good when we, as moms or wives or just these things that can feel so overwhelming sometimes and we don't know where to turn, he is so good. I remember being on my knees in the living room one day and saying, God, just feeling desperate. Like, I don't know where to turn here, Lord. Something's wrong. I need help, but I don't know where to go. I know all the diet answers, but I don't feel like that's the answer anymore. Yeah. And so God and his grace, I'm not kidding. It must have been that afternoon or maybe the maybe a day or two, but it wasn't that much longer. I was scrolling through Twitter and I came across a podcast where a, a lady that works with eating disorders, she had written this beautiful article that went along with the podcast about moms and how they can talk to their daughters. It was like my screen lit up. Like I knew it was from the Lord. Uh And on that article, she had a link to her website. And I clicked on her website, Heather. And up in the corner, it said, are you a mom with questions? Give Mm -hmm. me a call and we can talk. Uh And that's what I mean. I couldn't, I couldn't sign up for that consultation quick enough. Uh And That started this succession of me meeting with her over the phone. She was a a specialist who's out in Idaho, but we met over the phone and just talked and God answered my prayer (laughs) through her really was the, was the beginning of the journey of relearning all of this. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, because it feels like, so I know you're, you're a pastor's daughter. Yes. (laughs) And you're PK. And I mean, it feels like. There's no in between, between just know you're fearfully and wonderfully made and like right. be happy with that and do everything possible to get hot. <laughs> it's like, That's right. okay, uh, I know I should be on the one side and not on the other side, but I'm not <laughs> all the way there. So right. where do I go? <laughs> right. Kidding, you know? Yeah. Um, well, and don't you even think sometimes it's like, this whole, uh, how you look and how you take care of your body is almost elevated in the Christian world sometimes Uh because it's, it's cloaked under quote unquote, taking care of your temple. Absolutely. Taking care of my temple. So obviously I need to be out there and exercising till I'm blue in the face because I'm taking care of my temple. (laughs) Well, well, I remember growing up in the churches I grew up in now, (laughs) this is how I felt as I actually stop and think back through doing inventory of what the pastor's wives look like in these churches. It was probably more what I felt than what was actually true, but it felt like I saw pastor's wives who were really gorgeous. And, and so I felt like there was this, I don't know, this pressure, if you will, Mm -hmm. that, you know, I needed to look hot for Jesus. (laughs) Right. I would be a better witness if I looked really good, because then that's people right. would be attracted to Christianity if I was beautiful. Yes, and I think that's a, yes, I think that's a huge part of it too. Yeah. But it's like, but Jesus was ugly. Right. <laughs> it's like, how do you reconcile that? That's <laughs> like, right. Yeah. That's right. You know, it was special for him. <laughs> Wait. Right. Yes, it was. But <laughs> I think his message is you don't have to be hot to attract other people to me. That's so, right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, and then, so God's done this work in you. Like, yeah. so I know the way this works. 
I'm guessing it wasn't like one morning you woke up and you're like, oh, praise God, I don't have to diet anymore. Oh, I'm free. I don't have to think about this anymore. That's how it worked for you, right? Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> so what's that been like? Yes. Oh man. It it has been such like I had said at the beginning, such a difficult journey because letting go of this mm. thing, of this control is really what it is. Mm -hmm. It's this Oh, it's this sense of like fear, you know, mm -hmm. of I don't want to get fat. I don't want to mm -hmm. you know the, the, all of this in this, um, yeah, just this kind of little world that you've created, that this is the truth, letting go of that and relearning it and surrendering to what God would say. And, and like we were saying, um, just kind of like some of these themes that we as young girls internalized, maybe from the church, maybe the church wasn't meaning to put that out there, but we, that's kind of how we interpreted things. It's so unbiblical. Yeah. Just like what you were saying with, hey, Jesus was not this attractive person, um, but we had somehow internalized that that's what we need to do. It was completely relearning. What does God have to say in his word about food? Hmm. Because I had really equated food with almost like the enemy, you know, mm, yeah. <laughs> food is this thing that I have to manage. And, oh, if I just didn't even have to eat and you hear that joke, you know, mm. oh, if I just didn't have to eat, I'd be fine. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and really in the scriptures, if you look through the scriptures, food is this beautiful gift from God. Mm. It is this gift that he's given us to help us enjoy and celebrate. And how many times, I mean, the Bible even says Jesus is the bread of yeah, life. Like yeah. it uses, if you go through the scriptures, and that was one thing that was crazy to me on this journey, was seeing how many times God uses food in these wonderful ways. Mm, and and um, and so really, truly relearning what food is meant for in my life. Um, and letting go, one of the hardest things I did, and I'm not saying every person has to do this, but it's part of my letting go and surrendering. I felt like the Lord asked me to get rid of my scale completely mm -hmm. in my home. And because I would stand on that scale, Heather, oh, every morning, yeah. if not also in the afternoon and then maybe at night. <laughs> yeah, wow. And always my daughter was watching. She mm -hmm. was standing there, you know, and I'd be looking at that number and uh, she'd be wondering, Hey, can I stand on that mommy? You know, mm -hmm. and all of, again, these things I just didn't see. And so the Lord asked me to get rid of that scale and I threw it in the dumpster and it was so scary uh -huh. to do that, that sense of security of that number. But it was very symbolic for me. And man, that was a release not having that. And I still don't have a scale in my home Yeah, and being able to trust the Lord with that, that brought a lot of freedom. <laughs> well, I mean, it makes so much sense because it really is. And, and I felt like even before you, you started this, this segment, I felt like, I think we're going to need to talk about control today. Yeah. And I think for those of us that have been dieters control, you know, we think it's about food. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's more than that. It's, it's like you said, it's fear and it's control. And food is the one thing that is easier to control. I mean, not that it's easy. I mean, mm -hmm. goodness knows it's not easy, right? Mm -hmm. but, but it's a whole lot easier to control what you eat than it is to control your husband or yes. your children or yes. your boss or your life circumstances, right? So mm -hmm. it's, and, and I mean, that's what, you know, we see with, with young kids and, and, you know, teenage girls that, that go down the road of eating disorders is it's normally, it's a root of control. They're looking for something in their lives that yeah. they can have control over. And I wonder to what extent, like, yes, we teach our daughters dieting. We teach our daughters this really horrible message that their self-worth comes from being thin or being successful, being the Weight Watchers poster child <laughs> or, <Yeah>. you know, <laughs> Or like, or smiling when we get off the scale some days, 
or like frowning and just being angry with everyone all day long if the number on the scale doesn't say what we want it to say, right? But we teach our girls that lesson, but then we also teach them like, ooh, mommy thinks it's fun when she has a good food day. Like mommy yeah. has fun by controlling her food. Yeah. And what kind of lesson is that? You know, it's, it's yeah. just crazy to think about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so you have made some changes. Yeah. And your so, daughter's I mean, no, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, yeah. I mean, those would be some of the main things. It was it was like when the Lord started working on this in my life, and <laughs> you may have a similar story, Heather. It was like the it was like I was walking around with dark sunglasses on hmm. and I took them off yeah. and I everything was clearer. Yeah. And I'm like, how did I miss this? How did I miss this? Uh -huh. <laughs> because I started noticing things like, you know, obviously the thing with the scale and how many times has my daughter, yeah, seen me have a good food day and a bad food day and how that affects me. How many times has my daughter seen me judge other women and mm -hmm. go even with, you know, just, oh boy, you know, because I, I realized that was another thing that was developing in my heart, especially when I wasn't able to work out anymore. Mm. I started getting this pride of like, if I can keep my weight down, you can. Yeah. And I would go in, into, you know, women's meetings or whatever, where I would see a bunch of other women and I would silently be going, boy, if I can do why, why can't they have more self-control? You know, that's what I would be mm -hmm. thinking in my mm -hmm. head. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so how much my daughter even saw me sizing people up in, in different ways. Of course, I, I was always at the time thinking I wasn't, I was shielding her from that, but uh -huh. how much are you really when you're living that way? There were so many things. Um, I, I realized that when I was going into a dressing room, and my little daughter was coming in with me, trying on new dresses. She would say, mommy, you look so pretty. Mm -hmm. And I would literally go, ugh, well, yeah. if only my, if only I could get rid of this as I yeah. grabbed my arm, you know, the fat, the fit, what I thought was fat on my arm, you know, mm -hmm. saying things like that. And it was like the Lord took those glasses off and I just went, oh God, forgive me, mm -hmm. forgive me for what I have done. Yeah just the whole world was different. And I would say it took me probably four to five years that I remember then one time I went into some gathering where there were all these women and I was talking to people and I felt nothing but love mm. and kindness for, and, and just compassion for every woman there. And I remember thinking, this is it, God, yeah. like, this is it. Thank you for setting me free, even from that, that I didn't even know was, was springing from the roots of this control that yeah. I was having over food. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Body image been bogging you down for too long. It's time to get free, my friend. Go to comparejahoo.me, take your free body image awareness quiz. You will learn amazing things. You'll get your results right away. And I think you'll have fun too, because I mean, who doesn't love to take quizzes? Go to comparejahoo.me. There's lots of great resources on that site. Articles about body image and comparison and how you can find freedom through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Check it out today, right after this episode, of course. So kind of the same, but different. <laughs> I'm yeah. going on a little tangent here, Kristen. Come yeah, with me. Yeah, no, go um, for it. But I remember when I first started speaking, I would be really worried about getting it all right. And how did I look in front of everyone? Like, did everyone yeah. think that I was a really good speaker? Would everyone like me? And I had this speaking engagement and I will never forget it. And I, a woman that I kind of knew, we wrote a, on a blog together, had invited me to this group. It was a fairly large group. And I mean, I just flubbed it up. I mean, I just, I could not have tripped over my words anymore. And it just didn't come together. It just didn't gel. It just wasn't good. And I remember feeling so defeated. And I was like, oh, I can't be a speaker anymore. Like, this is just mm -hmm. horrible. And I remember God specifically telling me, like, you need to focus on loving them. Your mm -hmm. job as a speaker is not to impress them. 
but mm. to love them well. And so since then, so I had a speaking engagement this morning and it's like, since then my whole outlook has been my prayer every time I go speak somewhere, because it's a temptation to worry about what they think of you. Right. I mean, just like when you right. enter a room full of women, it's like, what are they going to think of me? But <laughs> my, my twist has been to pray, no, Lord, just help me love them well. And yeah. I think that that is where like, like that discovery you made, that's money. <laughs> like yeah. that, that is where the freedom is because okay. when you can walk into that room of women and when you can worry more about loving them well, then mm -hmm. do they think I'm dressed cute enough? Yeah. Did they notice my new purse that I paid a lot of money for? Mm -hmm. Did they notice that I got highlights done? You know, like when you can yeah. get over all that junk, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with highlights or a new purse or looking sure. cute, but when you stop worrying about that and can go into that room full of women and be like, who needs my love and attention? And you know, who needs me to, to be a friend to them today? Yeah. What a difference that makes in your ability to just walk through life with yeah. contentment and gratitude and just not stress over, yeah. over all that, all that stuff that, that yeah. culture tells us we should be stressing over. Right. It's right. So, it's so true. It's so true. And yeah, I really remember that particular moment. And since then, the Lord has just given me so many more to confirm it. And I just think, ah, oh, I don't ever want to live that way again, the way that I used to, you know, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So, it yeah. drives you crazy. Right? Yeah, because yeah. And, and this is what my next I was just telling Kristen before we started, like what my next book is on. And mm -hmm. this is exactly what my next book is about. It's yeah. like you, you have to choose whether or not you want to walk in love towards others and accept like all the awesome amounts of grace that God has poured out on you. Yeah. Or if you want to keep chasing better, because yeah. you can keep chasing better forever, because there's always going to be a better than your better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, that's right. Better has no, like, I think I wrote it this way in the book, like comparisons ladder has no top rung. You can never yes. stop. Like it just it's so true. It's never ending ladder. Right. Yes. And, and it's like, so you can stay on that ladder and keep climbing until you are exhausted mm -hmm. and never get anywhere. Mm -hmm. Or you can jump off the ladder safely. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and just change your outlook. And it, it is, yeah. it's a mindset. It's not about arriving anywhere. So. Hey there, how much is freedom worth to you? That's kind of an odd question, right? When I was in the midst of my struggle with disordered eating and body image, I would have paid anything I had to be free. Truth is, I spent a lot of my budget on things I thought could help me be free, like new diets, exercise gizmos, clothing, but none of those things really helped. I'm so grateful that God showed me the way out. And now I'm passionate about helping others find their way out too. I want them to know that Jesus already paid it all. They don't have to spend another cent to find the freedom they really desire. But truth is, it does cost me something to get this message out, compared to who can't spread the message of Jesus' offer of freedom without the help of women like you. Would you consider making a contribution? Check out Compared to Who's Patreon page at patreon.com slash compared to who. Then prayerfully consider giving $1 or $5 a month, whatever you can to help. Any amount you'd be willing to donate would be a huge blessing and will go directly towards covering the operating expenses of this ministry. Thank you for being a part of seeing other women set free from the chains of body image and comparison. May God bless your generosity. Okay, so let's shift. Mm -hmm. We have 12 year old girls. Yes. And we're seeing some interesting things. I think that there are ways, Kristen, that we can help our girls walk through this in a different way than we've walked through it, don't you think? Yeah, I do. I do. And so some of the suggestions, so Kristen actually wrote a blog post about this. Oh, I don't know, like three years ago on my blog. And I'm going to, I'm going to freshen it up and put it out there again for everyone to read it. But in that post, you talked about just some different strategies. And I don't know if you remember, cause it was a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot, but you talked about, you know, understanding where a healthy body image is found mm -hmm. and looking at your relationship with food and looking at who you admire and mm -hmm. the place of exercise. Like, is there anything in all of that that you found to be especially helpful with your daughter? Yeah. I mean, I would say 
it, the first one that you mentioned, knowing where a healthy body image is found. Because as I had said at the very beginning of uh, you know this conversation, I really didn't even know. I, I just I and I kind of maybe didn't even care to know. I I, <laughs> I, I had it figured out. What's all yeah. it's dieting? That's where it is, you know. And I yeah. didn't even give it a second thought. But now again, my daughter's twelve, so we are heading into like the deep stuff soon with her and and the real stuff of body image that she's going to be dealing with um you know as she goes into her teenage years next year um but the the great thing that i feel like in the the gift that god's given me is i feel like i do know where a healthy body image is found now so she may struggle i don't know what the lord's going to bring into her path and she, she may have struggles she may have her own questions and and fears and things with it but at least now she will have a mom who can answer those questions in a way that i i know is biblically based and um, coming from experience of the things God has taught me and not just these worldly answers that I would have given her before. Yeah, that's right. Really um, I, I just feel like that's such a gift God's given me. Cause again, I don't, I don't know what, what her journey is going to look like with this, but at least from my part in my heart before the Lord trying to, to lead her as he would have me, I feel like he has given me tools. Yeah. to to answer those questions how he would have me answer them. So, so have have you talked to her at all about your experience? Like does she know that mom's a recovering dieter? Have, <laughs> you, have you had any of those kind of conversations? That's a great question. Yeah, we have a little bit. You know, I mean she knew that that we were going to talk today and so uh -huh. she was curious about what's compared to who? You know, what what is that? And so I, I talked with her a little bit. So she does, she is aware. And I, I have shared with her a, a little bit as is age appropriate, sure. you know, um, uh, cause she's already seeing things that her friends are doing ways that her friends are talking about food, um, that are maybe causing some fear and things mm -hmm. like that. But, um, you know, yeah. So, so I've been able to, to springboard off of some of that and, and share a little bit of yeah. my journey, but you know, I hope to share maybe everything with her someday as yeah. the Lord opens the doors. Yeah, that's good. Well, so I was, I was actually just talking to someone at that speaking engagement I was at this morning about, you know, I, I kind of always give this spiel about the best way to help your daughter is to get it straight in your own head. And the number one thing your daughter needs is a mom who knows where her self-worth comes from and a mom who's not constantly on the, on the, what's my next diet? What's my next exercise thing? Like, you know, a mom that's not obsessed with all of that is the best thing you can do to help your daughter not be obsessed with all that. But, um, inevitably the question, you know, the question comes, well, like, how's your daughter? Yeah, right. <laughs> They're like, good, I think. Uh, <laughs> she seems fine. But I was sharing with someone this morning that my daughter started traveling with me when she was, well, I think she must have been six years old. Mm -hmm. um, and she would come and I, she'd bring her iPad with her. And mm -hmm. I would have her, like, put the headphones on because I would kind of secretly worry that maybe if she heard me talk about my body image issues starting at age nine, you know, that maybe she would look down at her own legs and worry that they were fat, just like I share when I share my testimony for people. Mm -hmm. and, and so I'd always be like, okay, well, just wear, wear your headphones, like, <laughs> so you don't hear that. <laughs> but it's been funny over the last few like, year or so, like she has brought up at various times, like, will you say that in your talk, mom? And I'd be like, uh... what? You were listening? Like, you didn't yeah. have that volume up? <laughs> <laughs> no, but so it's, it's been safer, if that's the right word, than I thought it would be to yeah. have open conversations with her instead yeah. of there being like the power of suggestion, like, oh, I should worry about this. I think it's been more of, you know, oh yeah, that didn't work out so well for mom. <laughs> right. um, I'm not going to do that. And, right? and sometimes her feedback to me is just like, that's really silly. Like, why would you do that? <laughs> that's yeah. really crazy. Chocolate yeah. is really good, mom. Why would you give that yeah. up? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like that kind of thing. So That's right. It's so funny because our, our kids know where it's at when it comes to food uh -huh. and all that kind of stuff. They, 
they get it. Yeah. Yep. Like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's dumb. But yeah, that's very interesting. <laughs> well, the other thing you wrote is about exercise. And I yes. know one thing that you, you wrote, and it's something that I've experienced too, is when we make exercise the chore, like you said, like the penance, if you will, to, to earn our way back to grace after eating chocolate cake <laughs> or, or the way, the way to burn off that slice of pie, like we suck the joy right out of exercise. Yeah. And one thing that you recommended was that we make exercise fun, right? Yes. Yes. Oh, how? I mean, I know your activity has been restricted, but yes. any suggestions to anyone listening as to how, like what that looks like? Well, I love this because, um, and I don't take credit for this, actually. This was a concept that the counselor, when I chatted with her, gave me. She said, I always equate exercise with play. Mm. She said, you know, kids, again, kids get this innately. They don't ever have to worry about scheduling a time at the gym because yeah. they're outside. They're on the monkey bars. They're playing basketball. They're on their scooter and bikes and just for the love of it, for the sheer joy of being outside and moving their body and having friends around and doing it together. Like kids get that. And she was encouraging me think about exercise that way. What is it that, that would just be play to you, would yeah. be joy to you? Yeah. That's where you need to find your movement. That's, mm. that's what it is. So um, again, for me, this is, it's very different for me because I, I wish I could get out and walk my dog. That would be one thing that would bring me joy, but I can't really even do that at yeah. this point with my back problems. Um, but, uh, you know, but just, ha I encourage moms to think that way mm -hmm. as they're thinking about exercise. What is it that would just truly bring joy, just yeah. like a child playing? Yeah, yeah. That's, re that's really good. Yeah, I did, I did a blog post a couple years ago. I don't know if you saw it, Kristen, but it was called The Joy Workout because I, there's yeah. a song by Rent Collective, and I think it's called Joy. But I got one of those little rebounder, like bouncy things, yeah. <laughs> you know, like the little mini trampoline. And it uh -huh. was like just a great song to bounce to. Now, since then, I've had lots of moms be like, if you have babies, you can't do that. And I had C-sections, so <laughs> I don't have that same problem. I got different problems. Right. <laughs> um, but, um, but I found that, um, that it would bring me joy to just like jump mm -hmm. listening to that versus you know, oh, I got to go to the gym and I got to spend 30 mm -hmm. minutes on the elliptical and yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. But then the other thing I found was playing that song in the kitchen with the kids around and just like dancing, you yeah. know, how much yeah. fun they think that is now. Like now, like we kind of jam out to like the early 90s song. Like I was playing a little Will Smith the other day and, <laughs> and I was dancing and my 13 year old son now has stopped dancing and just kind of sits there and he's like, that's really weird, mom. <laughs> Yeah. But, but the younger <laughs> ones, I think they're still really amused. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you make exercise a chore, if, if your mm -hmm. daughter is watching you say things like, I have to go to the gym. Did you see that pizza I ate last night? You know, mm -hmm. or, Hey, we've got the birthday party. I have to go to the gym. Like mm -hmm. she's getting a message. That's all wrong about exercise too. And it's right. That's right. That's Cause where in the Bible does God say yeah. <laughs> you better, if you have that you know, cherry pie, yeah. you better get out in the gym the next day. You know. <laughs> Thou shalt burn off all excess calories. Immediately, That's right. You know? <laughs> and, I mean, and I know someone's going to write me and be like, you should be healthy. You should worry more about health. And right. like, I'm not saying that, but sure. I'm just, yeah, that's if, right. if your life is too restrictive <laughs> when it comes to all of those, those treats, if you will, yeah. it zaps your joy. It really does. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. And I think, you know, so many people who deal with body image issues, our issues aren't, a lot of us, our issues aren't necessarily just doing things to excess. It's, it's that we're 
too much of rule followers and mm-hmm. we can under eat and undernourish ourselves oh, absolutely under and under the guise of health again i'm not saying everyone but i do think that there is that tendency so that's why i talk this way because i'm thinking of women who are like me who have that tendency to mm-hmm. oh i can follow the rules in fact yep. i can under eat if that's what's going to get me skinny you know that's more where where i can tend to go so oh, that's what i too. have to really focus on and and deal with in my life. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. Me too. And in fact, and I'm not sure if it'll be an episode back or two episodes back uh, by the time this one gets up, but um, I had a conversation with my friend, Erin Carey, who was also a contributor to the blog. I don't know if you had any interaction with her or not Mm -hmm. when you're both contributors, but Mm Erin's now an integrative health coach. And so we had this really long conversation about dieting and restriction and like what that does to your mental health. And Mm -hmm. We talked about this study of um, of men that they put on a restricted diet. I don't know if you've ever seen it, Kristen, but it's it's really amazing what happened to these really healthy men when they put them on a restricted calorie diet. How they started hoarding kitchen gadgets and uh, dreaming <laughs> about food and stuff like that. And so, but it, it was it was fascinating. But it was a good reminder that it is my tendency too to be overly yeah. restrictive, like yeah. and, and to. And it kind of, it comes right back to control, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's, I want to be a good girl. Yeah. You know, it's that, it's that I, I just, I want to do everything right. Yeah. If there's a little bit of perfectionism in there, yeah. you know, and, yeah, and it's like, and, and so somewhere along the line, I think we were told that doing everything right with food meant like following some obscure diet, <laughs> You know, and then, and then the crazy thing is, is that diet always had to change, right? Because the diet that was a good diet when like, well, I know when I was in college, it was low fat. Oh, I would eat like a whole half gallon of, of fat free frozen yogurt, Right, frozen yogurt, right? Right. By myself, (laughs) like my college roommates and I, they will be so embarrassed that I'm sharing this, but like we had five half gallons of frozen yeah. yogurt in our freezer and we each had our own, but yeah. they were fat free, oh, right? right there with you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so it's just, you know, and, and so now you wouldn't do that. You would be like, that's crazy. Do you have much sugars in there? How many carbs? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. But it's yes. like, there's always going to be something new and something, um, right. yeah, it's, it's yeah. not the way to live. Well, Kristen, yeah. thank you so much for, for sharing your story with us. And oh, uh, this was such an honor. Would you mind? I just have in my mind these moms who might be where I was wondering. And I, would you mind if I sent out a prayer for them right now? Oh, absolutely. That'd be awesome. Let's okay, do it. Okay, awesome. Father Lord, I just lift up anyone who's listening to this podcast right now who is also a mom with questions and who is wanting to do this right when it comes to helping their daughter to know where to go and have the answers that you would have her to hear. Lord, I know that you can provide it. Thank you for what you've done in my life and and how you have just brought such freedom for me. Um, And I, I am just, I want freedom for all these other women as well. I pray, God, that you will just meet them right where they're at and give them what they need on this journey as they're as they're figuring all of this out. So I lift up our daughters to you, Lord. Help us to lead them well. And I just ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, Kristen, thank you for that. Is there yeah. somewhere where if someone's listening and they'd like to connect with you, is there somewhere that they could do that, that you prefer? Oh my goodness. You know, I'm not really on social media as much anymore, but I am probably Instagram would be the best place. Okay. I'm at Kristen J. Maddox there. Awesome. And I can put that link in the show notes. Okay. And then I'm also going to link to a couple of your blog posts from, sure. um, from yesteryear. Yeah. Um, and anyone that wants to connect with you that way, they can just leave a comment on the post. And I know that uh, you'll get that. There are ways to connect with you. Thank yes. you, Kristen, and again. Oh, thank ahead. you for your ministry to Heather. Oh, it was thanks. huge. That was one of the things God used as well. So thank oh, you thank <laughs> for being you. you and for doing what you do. So. Oh, thanks, Kristen. See, I told you she was an encourager. We've come full circle. <laughs> Okay, well, that's all for today's episode of Compared to Who. I thank you for listening. Until next time, we'll see you then. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.